do this. That's what I call this message. Um, in the beginning of Mark 14, we read about a woman who came along and broke a seal on an expensive perfume bottle. And what he did was he poured the perfume over Jesus and was essentially anointing his body for the upcoming crucifixion and death. So then we go into farther into chapter 14. We find the boys and Jesus in Jerusalem, and they were in the upper room. Jesus broke a bread, a, a loaf of bread with his disciples. We call this the Last Supper, as Jesus was having his final meeting with the guys. They were trusted friends. They were his disciples. We call this the Last Supper. Jesus used the grain and the grape kind of as a symbolism of completion of life. When you eat bread, and I love making bread, it's the completion of the grain cycle. You've turned the wheat, you've baked it up, and you are consuming it. You are eating it. Same way with the wine or grape juice is what we're going to do, is that you've taken that grape off the vine, you've crushed it, you've beaten it up, you've pushed it into all together, and you make a liquid out of it. If it's wine, you ferment it and make it. So Jesus was liking this to his completion of what he's doing or what his mission was on this earth. It's the completion, the bread, it's the completion of the grain, and the wine or grape juice, completion of the grape. So then, let's read verses 14. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to him, Jesus said to him, This is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people, that is us, that are going to take communion today. It is poured out as a sacrifice for many. Jesus took the bread and with his breaking would symbolize what was going to happen to Jesus. He would be bruised. He would be broken. He would be crushed. He'd have stripes, 39 of them, laid across his back. And he would actually have little holes put in his head when they put the crown on him. His wrists and ankles would be nailed to a wooden cross. He would give his life for us. Like the bread Jesus broke at the meal table, his body was going to be broken. Then after the bread, Jesus shares the wine. Jesus would hold up the cup and then deliberately and lovingly explain that the wine would represent his blood. And that's real serious for Jewish people. Jesus was the Lamb of God. In the same way the Lamb was sacrificed at Passover with the shedding of blood, so Jesus as the Lamb of God would be slain. Jesus' body would be broken and his blood would be shed or spilled. Now in Luke's Gospel, he talks about the same meal, but he adds one more thing that Mark didn't tell us about. In chapter 22, verse 19b, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Most scholars of the word believe that the phrase do this gives followers a way to remember to celebrate, to honor the death of Jesus and his resurrection. So for centuries, believers of Jesus gather together as we are today and share in the act of breaking bread, offering the wine, and doing this as an act of worship. This is called the Last Supper, Communion, Eucharist. Eucharist means thanksgiving. If you look at it, be thankful for what the Lord has done. This helps us to recall and remember the sacrifice that Jesus has made, has paid for us. We are forgiven of our sins and fellowship with the God, the Father. You can examine for yourself this next area I want to talk about. There's more to the do this than just remembering. More than remembering the short event that we're going to do this morning. I believe that to do this is an even greater act, and it refers to to how we are to live our lives, how we are to conduct ourselves when we leave this area. We remember Jesus at communion, but we also remember him in how we live our daily lives. Are we not to live for Jesus in a sense of being broken and also to pour out our lives for him? I didn't forget to mention, if you don't have a handout, there's no blanks going, but you can sure grab one when you get back and go and look over the lesson a little bit. I know this sounds not very appealing, do you or I 
You really want to be broken every day? Each day, that's what it says to do. Or how about, let's be poured out, let's give of ourselves over and over, same thing, as we go through life. Doesn't this sound kind of painful? And maybe even not so pleasant? But if you have listened and followed what the scriptures say, isn't it in the giving of our lives each day that is where we find our true joy and the joy of serving Him? Instead of filling our lives of what you and I want, we need to empty our lives and to make a difference in the lives of others, friends, relatives, family, strangers, enemies, make a life of difference. That's what Jesus did. Isn't it hard to imagine what the disciples must have thought when Jesus gathered them around the table and spoke these words? And of course they didn't want to see him go. They knew that Jesus said he was going to die. They maybe didn't believe it, wondered about it. They, I suspect, that a lot of the, what Jesus had taught them came to their mind at that time. And he did refer to that. We've got to give of ourselves. And the first shall be the last. They probably remembered what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24b. You want to be my follower. If so, deny yourself, take up the cross, and follow me. We are to die to ourselves so we can live for him, for Jesus Christ broken and poured out. The next Jesus says in verse 25, for whoever, or if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. And if you give up your life for my sake, for Jesus' sake, you will save it. Jesus doesn't invite us to a life of comfort and ease. But Jesus has us live a life of surrender and sacrifice. That's the bottom line, I believe. It's a life of surrender and sacrifice for Jesus' teachings and what he said and what he modeled in all that we do and everything. We are to live day by day and moment by moment. And yes, we're going to take communion this morning and share together the body of believers, fellowship together. But when we step out these doors, we need to continue to do this. Do what the Lord has called us to do. What if Jesus meant when he said, do this? He wasn't just talking about taking communion at church. What if Jesus was calling us to be broken and to be poured out every day, every moment of our lives? What if he is calling us to a life of sacrifice, humility, generosity? And then you know what? You will experience true joy. Let's pray more than God protect me, watch over me, and please, please bless me, Lord. And let us invite God to a deeper walk with him in our lives from this time forward, especially in these days. And when this passes, if it does pass, we continue that walk with the Lord. Let's invite God to a deeper walk, a deeper walk of knowing him and experiencing him deep inside of us. Just maybe God has us to do that. Maybe problems make us stronger. I think they do. They have for me. Burdens become blessings. And I don't consider it a burden, but it got a little taxing on me taking care of my mother for the last couple, three years of her life. But it was a blessing. It truly was. I spent time with her to listen to her and, and, and stories and just different ways, and through that the Lord told me, taught me how I should act, how I should, as Jesus would have, just be compassionate. You know, when, when she got older, it was hard for her to do things and different things, and things didn't make sense, but I did what I was to do, following the Lord and blessing her with the Lord and blessing her with her treats that she had to have, and that was no problem. It didn't make any difference. How about trials help our faith grow? Mm, that's a tough one. Look at those trials. Don't let them eat you up. Allow them to grow, to have growth. And then how about hurts? Hurts will give you compassion. Maybe the hurt we feel will give us compassion for the hurts of others. All of you have different hurts. And those areas what make you stronger. Relate to that person, that stranger, that one that comes across your path. 
Not all of us had the same hurts. Not all of us can relate to the same people. But we have those certain things inside of us that hurt us. But it gives us compassion. And if Jesus, now Jesus, of course, understood everybody's hurts and was able to give compassion. But he was the son of God. He can do that. I'm not. And he was able to do that. God, break me to be broken and poured out for you. Is a prayer that we need to have. Break me to be broken. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you did come and you took that time at that last time with the disciples before you died. And you gave us communion or Eucharist, which means thanksgiving for what you did for us, Lord. But help us to remember that more than just when we come forth at the front of the church on a Sunday or any other time, Lord, when we have communion. But that we truly, he was, if you want to look at the scriptures that way, challenge us, do this, do it all the time, every moment. And I pray that for each one of us as we gather together this morning, if you're watching this online, search your own heart out and allow the Lord to just come inside and minister to you, to do this every moment of our lives. And we thank you for that, Lord. Before we shut this off, we are going to Come up and get the communion elements as a church. And we're going to shut off during that time. But we're going to, the record person's going to turn it back on when we take the communion elements. So if you got a little time and you want to uh, go grab a little bit of grape juice or juice, any kind of juice will work, or water if that's all you got, and just a hunk of bread or a piece of cracker. And then join us when we come back and turn on for our communion together. Amen. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread. We blessed it. Lord, I thank you that we're able to share this together as a body of believers, as a church. Then he broke it in pieces and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, which confirms a new covenant between God and his people which is each one of us sharing this communion element together. It is poured out as a sacrifice for many in your life. Drink. Then Jesus says, I will tell you the truth, I will not drink wine again. He's talking about his return to coming back to this earth. It was a fourth bottle or a fourth cup, I think, for him for the Passover. He didn't do that one. And I will not drink again until I drink it new in the kingdom of God when he comes back. And then they sang a hymn, probably from the Psalms, and went out to the Mount of Olives, and we're going to join together in a song. Come the fountain, every blessing to my heart. To sing the grace, streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious songs, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I fixed upon. Mount of thy redeeming God. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by my help I come. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus, Wandering from the fold of God, He to rescue me from danger interposed His precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, thy confederate, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh 
take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Lord, take our heart and seal it for you. Lord, seal our hearts. Do not let the fears of the world grab a hold, but we turn them all over to you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who did that with his disciples just before the knowing what was coming. We're willing to give and help us, Lord, to give that life of sacrifice, to be poured out, to be broken for you. Amen. You may be seated, or standing, I'm sorry, you may stand. What a wonderful God we have. How great are his riches in wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his method. For who can know what God is thinking? Who knows enough to be his counselor? Who can give enough to him that he would have to pay us back? Everything comes from God the Father. Everything exists by his power and is intended for his glory. To him the glory forever. Own his peace. Amen. There's prayer for healing on the north side, and Charles and I are available if you need us.